Welcome to the December edition of Turf Moor. Like Santa, the Clarets are on the travels in the next week. And here's what treats we've got in store for you this month. Lenny John Rolls makes a welcome return to Burnley as part of his Project 92 campaign. I speak to Jay Rodriguez and Andy Payton about playing for the hometown club. And Sean Dyche delivers a great in-depth interview on the past, present and future of Burnley. Former Clarets midfielder Lenny John Rolls is currently travelling the country visiting football clubs, trying to raise awareness and raise funds for motor neuron disease. We caught up with Lenny on his arrival at Barnfield as he talked to the players about Project 92. Lenny, great to see you at the training ground the other day in Turf Moor today. How important is it, A, to be here for yourself, but equally in terms of the message that you're spreading? Yeah, uh, obviously, first of all, I've got to say I'm delighted to be here um, and grateful for Burnley allowing me the, the opportunity to come in. Um, yeah, the message is strong, it's, um, it needs circulating, I don't think a lot of people know about it, or certainly not enough, but um, yeah, I'll sort of keep fighting the fight to come back here where you know I enjoyed so many great times. Like I say, it's a privilege and an honour, but um, the important thing is getting that message across and a lot of people have helped me to do that. You say fight is the word, you, you've, you've attacked this with great courage and dignity, but as you say, just so more people are aware of it, to help financially to support the fight against MND, but just equally to, to spread the word about what people need to be aware of. Yeah, absolutely, and I, you know, I always talk about various other sort of terminal illnesses that people know a lot more about, and it's not a battle about who's is better and who's is worse, it's about getting the message across. Um, and like I say, for whatever reason, MND seems to be a bit of a silent one. Um, not people know how it manifests itself, what it does, what day-to-day -day living's like, and there's not enough funds as well. Um, I spoke the other day at the club about the Ice Bucket Challenge where the money's running out now, so we need a lot more money for research. And hopefully one day, sort of fingers crossed, we'll find a cure for it. And Doddy Weir's been a hero for it, but the football community's got behind yourself at various clubs. Yeah, it's been absolutely incredible. Um, when I first announced it, what, 15, 16 months ago, I didn't expect this, that's not why I did it. But well, like I said, the football community have been absolutely integral to to what I'm trying to do and they've made, played a massive part and uh, without their support I wouldn't have been doing anything that I'm doing now so um, yeah it's a big thanks to them. We were down at the training ground on Tuesday quite different from your days there but, but did it, A did you enjoy the experience and it was nice to see the lads? Yeah it was fantastic and it, you say it was different and the training ground is different but the players were the same they were still very down to earth very friendly it looks as though they're all really grounded and it was, it was a breath of fresh air really walking through there because um, Premiership players get a lot of bad press, but they were absolutely brilliant. They were complete credit to sort of the management staff for the way, like I say, they've kept grounded. So it was great. And I said before, the food was fab, fab as well. Obviously, you know, very, very unfortunate what's going on. But as we heard today, explain it in a really nice matter of fact way, not trying to feel sorry for himself or any of that. Um, good bit of humour as well. I was pleased to see that intact, even through such tough circumstances. So yeah, anything we can help with, we will. The message is important to spread the word and, 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 and get it out there for people to be more aware. But equally, it's important to raise money and other lads are going to help out with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, Lee mentioned about shirts and things, but also there's a Just Giving page, and so I think that's important as well. So the lads will certainly do their bit for that. So I the lads, and, uh, and obviously, you know, work for the charity. Uh, but in future, we will help out anything that Thank we can you. do. Really okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks. 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 It goes without saying that playing for your hometown club is something rather special. And recently I had the pleasure of sitting down with two local heroes. One from the past, one from the present. Oh, that's great skill from Rodriguez. Oh, what a goal! What a goal from Jay Rodriguez! And Peyton, he scored! He scored! My goodness, mate! Chance to seal it here for Rodriguez. He hooks it forward. He scores! His first league goal for Burnley. Let's go get a cross in. Tune in, Actor Big. Oh, and he's done it again. I don't 
believe this. Ball in here from Wallace. It's in there. It is. Burnley have done it. It's Jay Rodriguez to make him 4-3. Well, joining us today on Claret's Player, we have two local heroes, and that was the reason for getting these two lads together, just to talk about their affinity with the club and the striking union. Andy, uh, you've just been down here for the first time in quite a while to the training ground. Yeah. What, what were your thoughts of what you saw down there? Well, yeah, first time I've been around Barnfield, and it's um, it's a different world altogether. Isn't it? It's Premier League, isn't it? That's what comes with the Premier League, but it is... I mean, there's more staff than um, what we used to get on the reserve game, I think. You know, it's unbelievable. You used Fantastic. to probably have to get an ice bath. You'd get an old bin when you're wheeling, yeah. you're sitting in. Yeah. These lads now have got full, luxurious oh, baths yeah, in the in lot. Incredible, now, no? incredible. But, it, I mean, that's, it goes with the territory, doesn't it? But yeah. it is, it's fantastic for uh, to what we used to have. Well, you had it as well, because you yeah. both had the old building, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Before we moved into the new block. So you, you've seen the changes as well, Jay. It's a different club, isn't it? There were no facilities like that. Mm. We used to... When I first when I first got into the first team, almost we were driving from from the ground to here, mm. and then after training, all muddied up, and you drive back. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you yeah, know, no. yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. When you get in the big bath, <laughs> I remember the big bath. Yeah, so it was a uh, nice. No, it's, it's a it's a massive. Like I said, when I first came, it was a massive like eye opener how, how much it's come, and it's like obviously for the good, and it's a, like I said, it's a, a Premier League club. How are you enjoying? Being back at Burnley in terms of not just on the field, but I guess off the field, looking like you do now as well, you noticed everywhere you go. You probably can't knock off from, from Burnley in many ways because you, you're embedded in the club. Do you feel I, that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you ever can. Even if, you know, when I've, I've lived away, every time I've come home, you know, you, you see friends, family, people you you recognise or you've, you've knocked about with. And um, I think that's 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 what I think everyone from Burnley loves about Burnley is everyone's welcoming and you know you see anyone who, who you, you've had a chat with or you, you know you just have a chat and it's I think that's the Burnley way I think everyone's dead welcoming and um, I don't think that'll ever change I, I always find that um, because we know everyone we went to school with people around here everywhere you go when you play for Burnley when you're local uh, everyone wants to talk about Burnley Yeah. you know a lot of the lads who um, you know who don't, who don't live in Burnley there's probably quite a few now they don't get that you know, we we when you when you live in the area and you're playing in the first team um, for the club, it's with you all the time. And I, I I'll be honest with you, I, I thought I think there's a little bit more pressure on local lads to produce. You know, everyone knows us and all that, but they want to see us doing the business out there and scoring the goals. Did and, you feel uh, that? And do you feel that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I I felt more pressure. I think on my debut for Burnley than I did playing in Old Firm game for Celtic. Uh, just because there's an expectancy there, we weren't doing the well, that well at the time either. But uh, just everyone knows you, and, and it don't matter what you've done in the past. I mean, I think when I came here, I'd, I was like ten years into my career. But um, it's 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 how you do, you know, for your hometown club, and it it's just a different kind of pressure. And I'm sure you probably feel that. Yeah, well, I felt that. You know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, it's every time you speak to your mates or family, it's you know, like I say, it's about Burnley or. They've all got you down as first goal scorer. And <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not the best money. Worst the money, but uh, no. And I think like you know, you do, you know, if you're having a, a tough patch, you know, they're not gonna, your family and friends aren't gonna shy away from telling you what they think and that, yeah. that, that comes with it and it's I think it's good for me I, I loved it like coming through and then getting to the first team you know you, like I've always said you have to pinch myself sometimes when I'll, I'll be I'll be playing in the game and thinking jeez I'm here playing on turf more and it's like you know it might not be a big thing to people from from Burnley but when you're brought up like you'll you'll yeah. know that feeling is different isn't it so yeah, it's yeah. um you, you touched on the pressure there, Andy, of playing for your hometown club, and you both feel that a little bit. I'd imagine the flip side of that is the adulation and the the, the joy you get from scoring for that team yeah. must be doubled than anywhere else in yeah, your career. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It really is. Uh, we both felt it yeah, because yeah. We, we come from this area. And, you, you know, you can actually... I remember scoring, and you see faces in the crowd, obviously, and people that you know, and, they, you know, and, and it, it's brilliant, you know, and it... it you know, I think I felt I, you know, felt very fortunate to be in that position. I'm sure you did yourself, Jay. And uh, no better feeling when your mates are. Um, I mean, we got a promotion. I know it weren't up to the Premier League. We're up to the championship. Yeah, it's so a big one. We both had a promotion at the club, um, and and you see the joy. You know, in, in friends and family, it's fantastic, isn't it? In closing, what's the best thing? I'm going to ask you both this. What's the best thing about Burnley? The best thing about Burnley, I think the support's magnificent, and it always has been. People in Burnley, 
support Burnley. Um, and and I've got pictures of me as uh, I supported Burnley as a kid. You know the old V one. You know back in the day. So being a Burnley supporter and playing for your team and scoring for your team and, and getting a promotion with your team, which we've both done, is um, you can't buy that feeling. You know and. Uh, like I say, I just feel very fortunate to have had the opportunity, but also as well that, you know, and both of us delivered, mm. you know, and, and did quite well for the club, you know. That's an understatement. Well, what's your what's the first thing about Burnley? I think, I think yeah, I think it's the, I think the people, I think, you know, no matter, like I said, where you go, you you know, I've travelled, like lived down Southampton, Birmingham, and you're always, you know, every time I've come back, I've had a great reception, and even coming back, just seeing people around, if I'm going for food or something, the, I think it's very welcoming as a club, mm. and they're very loyal. Um, and I think, you know, when you, when you come here, um, you, you feel the support straight away, and, and Burnley, Burnley Football Club is a massive part of this town, and I think everyone in it's a massive support, and I think that's that's the feeling. I think welcoming is is probably like the best thing, I think. Yeah. And let's, I did lie, let's leave the fans with a Christmas tree. What was your favourite goal that you scored for the club? My favourite goal. I was fortunate me because the club made a DVD with every goal I scored for Burnley, so I've actually got every goal. I can you watch bought it. every copy, I think. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Dad. <laughs> um, but no, what I'm saying is, so one. I mean, it were the, the the probably the last home game of the season when we went up. We played Cambridge at home. We won two 0 and um, it was. I mean, my left foot was a swinger. Probably it still is. It was always a swinger, but. I've ended up, ball got played into me and I've ended up doing a Cruyff turn and hitting it on the turn and it's just it. gone straight mm. in the top bins. Uh, that one sticks in my mind, but I'll be honest with you, I got to the point where a tapping from two yards, you know, if, if, you, if you're going through a bit of a lean spell, you'll take anything. I thought I was going to say, I'll get to be honest with you, I've lost count. I thought I was going to say that then. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what was your, what's your favourite goal for Burnley? It has to be my first one, I think. The, the full the, one. Yeah, I think just for the whole, the whole feeling of it, like coming on, I think it really... I got a taste of what it could be, mm. and I, re I really wanted more of that feeling. I mean, I don't think like obviously the stadium weren't as full as a, a league game and stuff, but I think that feeling of, of scoring was, was brilliant. Well, listen, it's great to catch up with you, lads. Have a great Christmas. And you, yeah. Uh, Thank keep you. scoring the goals. Goodbye. Sorry, Andy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Two 0 What can you say about Andy Payton? It's already been said. Jay Rodriguez! Oh, what about that for a story? Jay Rodriguez is back. He's back with a goal. Every December, Clarets player likes to get into the festive spirit with a series of Christmas videos. We've had the goalkeeper's wrapping challenge, badly drawn Clarets, and even bad cracker jokes. This year, how about a game of Guess Who? Is this meant to be on the table? No, you idiot. It's not my fault, I'm not the producer, am I? Have you got a first one there? No, I mean, like, is it like... There's no way. There no there's no way. Oh, I'm like, not good enough for this. Okay. You look a little like Glenn Little, though. <laughs> look like Glenn Little. <laughs> <laughs> You're the spit of Glenn Little, look, no. I was You're not having that it's Glenn Little. Exactly. It's it's no <laughs> chance. Oh, Grinch. Oh, uh, <laughs> I've got one. Is he a current player? It's vague. How is it vague? Is, is it? he a current player? Yeah, he's a current player, yeah. Oh my god. Alright. Yeah, it's a lot. Is it? Well, this ruined the game, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've got two people there. Is he wearing claret kit? No. Is there no claret? Is it, are we talking like red? Is there a red though in there? Is it not claret though? I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, I just I don't think so. I think I've got but claret. Oh, you picked the worst question. Know, yeah. <laughs> Is he a midfielder? No. <laughs> what? I've got two people. No, you haven't. Your first question was wrong, definitely. Is he a current player? No. Is he, is he a current player for Burnley? Yeah, no. He's not a current player, but... See, this is where you went wrong. Because I know you put my person down. And not a current player for Burnley. You, you were vague in your answer. You <laughs> 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 missed it. I put down here, I don't know what. <laughs> oh, there we go. Right. We start again. No, what? don't worry, don't worry. I'll, so be, I'll, I'll work saying... it out, I'll work it out, I'll work it out. I've done it wrong, fine. God, I'll work it, it out, wrong, don't yeah. worry. Do we play up against them in this Premier League season? Yeah. 
Has man got long hair? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do I get to guess first then? So what happens there? Because I've got the person. So have I. No, you haven't. In my opinion, I think I've got it. Is it Tom Heaton? Yeah. <laughs> yes. George, George Boyce? Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Is he an ex-player? Technically, yes. What do you mean, technically? Technically, yes. Oh, okay, that's a bad question. You start, you start, you start. <laughs> Is he a current Burnley player? No. Is, is yours retired? No. That's two retired, great questions retired. for you. You could work that out easily. Retired. I'm, I, I took it as, is he retired from playing football? Okay, yeah, thank you, yeah. So, no. <laughs> he's not retired <laughs> from playing football. God, I'm so confused. I don't he know still he's... plays football. He still plays football? Yeah, so you said, oh is he retired? God, this is painful. So he's retired from playing football? Yeah. So he's still playing football? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Is he a current player anywhere? Yeah. That tests my knowledge on some of these. Does yours play for Burnley? Uh, yes. Does play for Burnley. <coughs> Can you see Claret on his shirt? Yeah. Is he attacking? Is he? Do he play? Definitely not. Is he not? Right. Definitely not. It's definitely picked me. Though, He's far, far, <laughs> far from attacking. <laughs> <laughs> he should score ten a season, but he's far from attacking. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a guess, don't I? <laughs> right, what, you, what are you going, are you going for? It? I've got five to pick from. I've got mine. So, yeah, yeah. I know you've got yours. I <laughs> gave it away. <laughs> um, I'm going to guess and just have a little stab at it. Is it uh, Boxy? Yeah. <laughs> Is it me? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a win. You win. Best out of three, you win then. Is he technically an ex player? No. Yeah. I thought that would have given it away straight away. Me, on. technically ex player. You're right here online, technically ex. I, thought, I meant like, like, yeah, like, ex, like used to play football. No, you said, is he an ex Burnley player? Technically, you are. Delete all that. Delete it all. It's almost as painful as that one soccer Sunday, whatever it was. You can't even win a game. Car guess crash. who, mate? Car crash. It was. Two 0 yeah. Cheers, mate. Okay, mate. Thanks for the game. John Dyke is currently the second longest serving post-war manager after the late, great Harry Potts. And after seven years at Turf Moor, we sat down with the gaffer recently as he lifted the lid on his time at the club, starting at the very beginning. It was tough, but it wasn't the end of the world. You know, there's people out there who come out of jobs all the time who are right on the breadline. I certainly wasn't on the breadline, so, you know, you, you've got to think of it, or I compartmentalise it slightly differently. I've lost my job, but I'm OK. My family's OK, we're intact, so, you know, let's not cry it in too much. What did you, <coughs> what did you think coming to Burnley then? What, what attracted you to Burnley at the time? Well, it was a job. So there's a start when you've only had one year in management and you think, well, we, who's going to come around the corner? Um, I, think, I think they were on something sort of anyway because of the previous few years. But then I, I equally, I wasn't naive enough to know they were cutting and they were, you know, bringing things back into check from the two, two and a half years previous in the Premier League. Um, I think the biggest challenge other than on the pitch was lifestyle wise. I've never lived away from my wife and kids. That's tough, um, particularly if results are not going well. Very, very result based business, as everyone knows, and it makes the whole place feel different. Um, and then you're kind of computing it, mixing it all up and wondering how you're going to fathom out this new situation. Your ways that, because Watford obviously had been a coach there as well, so they sort of knew me and what it was about. You walk into a new group, they don't know you. Um, they worked it out pretty quickly, I'm fair to say, what it was going to be like. Um, and then we managed to get it over the line the first year in, in good shape, actually. We're, you know, I think we finished 11th, and um, despite having a tough period. So a lot of that, a lot, a lot going in. It wasn't just about the job, it wasn't just about getting offered it. Even getting offered out to make a decision. It's three hours away from my family base. You know, it's not an easy decision, that. Um, I don't think there's a... a a defining moment of why you stay at a club forever other than winning enough, winning what's deemed enough. So the reason for saying that, when we got promoted, that's quite obvious. But in the Premier League, I think there's a good reality to the fans here. I think they realise it's a big challenge for us every year in the Premier League. So last season, the best example, of course, really tough till Christmas and the fans stayed in there. They did stay in there. They, you know, they and there are massive amounts of credit for that. It's hard now. Fans, instant, life's instant now, you know, and the fans here are stuck in they didn't really turn. They were probably on the cusp when we got beat by Everton. They're probably thinking, oh, where's this going? 
but they stuck in there with the players and, and obviously the rest after that we turned it round um, I don't think there's an ever ending job you know I mean I think it's changed now I don't think you'll see Arsene Wenger you know last year 22 years or whatever I don't think that's going to happen in the future um, me and Eddie I think are the, the longest now in the Premier League mm -hmm. and I think we're second and third in the whole of football at the minute but here so far they've wanted me to stay do you think about that do you think driving up one week could it be here in two years could it be here in 18 months could it be here in three years or do you I don't you just... overthink it but I think it crosses your mind you know I've got a couple of years left on my contract here and you know and, and we're, we've made a pretty decent start to the season I think um, the demands are forever you know I don't, I don't think it's going to soften I think the demands are going to get worse for managers and at least the the, 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 the the managers before my time that's what they tell me they think it's harder now which is interesting, you know, they, they, they speak to you and go, no, no, I think it's harder now. Mainly because of the media demands, the social media demands, the, the way that every result is like, you know, it's super high or super low. And, and I think that's changed radically. Even in my, I'm eight years, eight odd years in, and I've noticed that, how much that's changed. Mm. Um, I just think you become, I'm, I'm quite a realist anyway, I know the realities of football. So if it changes and it doesn't go my way, as long as I know I've worked hard and given everything, then I can sleep pretty well with that. You know, that's my sort of marker. What about the, the old subject that is coming up this week when there's managers under pressure and there could be foreign managers coming in mm -hmm. of your personal ambition? Will, will, do you think there'll become a time yeah, where, I mean, where the club might not match your personal ambition and you have yeah, to look I, after I, yourself? I think, I think there's a bit of that, but I, I think it depends what type of person you are. And I sometimes get knocked by people who, uh, even friends of mine, who say you're not you're not selfish enough. You know, they go, you should you should have done this, that, and the other. And I go, well, I always felt I was a team player. Well, if you're a team player, then you've got to be a club player. You know, if I'm a manager, I've got to be part of the club. So, I've always thought the club. I work for the club. The club comes first, and I'm just the person who's guiding it. And and that's how I think about it. So, regarding ambition, my point is. Um, it's kind of an ambition to work at a club like this because it's difficult, you know, and it tests you, it stretches you all the time. There's no, it's not an easy ride here. And I'm not saying there are, by the way, in football, because before anyone misquotes me, I'm not saying there's easy rides, but we don't have the financial clout of others. We don't, we can't just cherry pick. We can't just put people in and out and, you know, not worry if they make money um, as regards a resale. We have to worry about all them things. And we also have to develop heavily what's here and, and work with the players we've got. And so it's a different kind of ambition. But it's ambitious in that sense because there's a lot of things that are tough. On the other hand, there's a lot of honesty, there's a lot of openness. We have a, a good way of working, me through the chief exec, uh, Mike Riggs come in, the owner, the board, you know, there's a lot of openness with that, so that's helpful. Regarding my ambition, uh, is there something around the corner somewhere down the line? Who knows? You know, I, I don't overthink that. I just get on with trying to win the next game. And I think if you do that often enough, you're often deemed successful if you win enough of them next yeah. games. Because when a job comes at Leicester, I'm thinking, look, <coughs> last season, Claude Puel loses his job and second bookie's favourite is Sean Dyche. And people are saying he should be ambitious. He should be wanting that Leicester job. What, what do you yeah, say to that? Yeah, but it, you've got to, all parties have got to agree, you know. It's all got to be, you know, if it ever gets to the point where you're sitting down with something, everything's got to be agreed. It didn't, by the way, before you're wondering. But, yeah. You know, they're, they're, if them if them times come and someone approached our chairman and said this is what we want, you know, and then I was the right person, you know, then that might change. If that comes along, then we'll we'll worry about it. If it does, um, at the minute I get on with life here. I, I quite enjoy it. There's times when I don't, not very often, to be fair. But there are times when you don't. I didn't enjoy the first half of last season. I can assure you that. <laughs> I enjoyed the I enjoyed the turnaround. Though. Yeah. So manager's point of view, just going off, off the subject slightly, but you've got to remember in my world, that's my best season last season. As an individual, as a manager, that's my best season last season. From where you were at Christmas? Yeah, but everyone thinks it'll be, we got to Europa and all that sort of stuff, or promotion seasons. Last season was my best season as a manager. Really? Because it was going badly wrong, badly wrong. And I knew it, but even when you know it, manager will tell you it's not so easy to change it. So the fact we collectively change it, not just me, but I'm the one who takes the heat sort of thing. That's my best season last season, without a shadow of a doubt. Was there a time a year ago where you thought, this might have run its course, this, there might be bored of yeah, me, I, my I voice? Think, or... I think you're inhuman to not think that. Uh, you know, mm. I, I think there are times, you, I spend a lot of time on that M6 in my car, trust me. So there are a lot of reflections going on, you know, and all the, the ins, outs, ups, downs, um, possibilities, probabilities, where are we, where can we go to, all of them things. So yeah, I think that's inhuman um, to not think. And I also think it's healthy, I think it keeps you sharp. What, what, the what ifs, you know, what, what if it goes wrong? What, how can we stop it from going wrong? You know, all these things, they, they're all, 
all a constant, I think, as a manager. And yet again, it just becomes more normalised. I find that a normal experience, driving down the road, listening to music, but with a million thoughts going through my mind. It's mm. that standard for most football managers, I think. Mm. I'm interested to know when people say, Mauricio Pochettino recently, five and a half years old, people, people are fed up with the same voice. But I'm thinking from a player's point of view. That <coughs> well, excuse me. Um, I suppose um, I think uh, freshness changes that. I think from you, your coach's voice, your ideas, your thinking. I don't think we go away on the other hand from the, the, the things that the key core values that I think are important. New players, of course, change that because for them it's new. Your voice, your expression, your tone, your, your, uh, you know, your training sessions, your guidance is all new. So that refreshes it. Then they rub off on the other players because they're playing, oh, you know, they go, oh, well, I think it's pretty good. It's new to me type thing. So that rubs off through the group. Um, but it is difficult, you know, you, 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 are, you are who you are and, and people do, I am very Marmite, I'm aware of that, by the way, I always was. Um, so, you know, I do get um, a, a little bit of stick as well as a little bit of praise, so. but I'm quite happy with both. And is that, in all seriousness, is that a challenge as a manager to, to keep things moving, evolving? Oh, definitely. I mean, so Alex used to say to me when I, when I meet him, he's always very generous with his time for young managers, not just me, many. Um, and he say, you know, that, well, it's a business thought actually as well. But you know, every three to five years, change your staff, change your players, or change your workforce as such. You told Wayne, well, Tony that one. <laughs> exactly. They said, well, when I told them that, they went, oh, brilliant. I'm pleased they said that. That's great news. Um, and I said, well, you two are first to go. Um, no, I think, I think, you know, there is a there is a clear thought in that. That's not always easy here because of the finances. So we've got to be, you know, it's not easy to bring five in, five out scenarios. Um, but I think. Over time, you, you can adapt and twist and change. You know, we've done it in a different way here through, through all these buildings and new training ground. New, you know, it's new, it's fresh. Um, we freshen up the training ground in different ways and, you know, just the signage and things like that. But the work's still there. The work has to be done. So I say to the players, the work is there. We have to do that work. We can change all this, but at the end of the day, you've got to become in, uh, come in rather clear-minded and ready to work. And that will never change. You know, if they do that, you're always on something is when the edge comes off the work, that's when you really question or that's when I really question it. Mm. Do you put a target on what would be a, a good season for Burnley this season? <clears throat> Excuse me. The target, considering the indifference of last season, the target was to build from there on. So signs, early signs, well, relatively early, I think we're 13, aren't we going 13? So yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, and especially compared to the first 13 games of last season, of course, but from Christmas onwards, you know, looking at that, looking at the viewpoint from then, where... Where are we at the end of the season? Okay, now where are we going to take that from there? Now we're going to take that forward. I've been pleased with that. So that's a start point for this season. It's not about um, grand you know, lines about where we're going to finish or any about that. It's about the fact, are we continually moving forward? I think individually and collectively, we are moving forward again. We had a big lull last season, in the first half of last season, but we're now shifting forwards again. That's a good marker for me as manager, for them as individuals and for us as a team, of course then I really do mean it. I've worked for years here and at Watford. The next game's the most important one. I'm not one for planning the rest of the season. The next one's the most important. We plan everything up to then and then move forward from there. Slightly different, I must say, just to, to give you an open view, slightly different in the Europa League. That's different. You, the games are so quick. The turnaround's so quick. We had to look at a different way of operating. Pre-season, into the season, etc. But when you're in a normalised or normalised first um, run of games in the Premier League, the next one's the most important one. If you keep getting the next one right, of course, we know it can lead to better things. And, and the last couple of weeks we've done that. The last couple of games, I should say, we've done that. We've got to keep doing that. Well, good luck. It's been great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Top Cheers. Man. And you can watch the extended version of that interview now on Claret's Player. And that's it for the December edition of Turf Moor. With one game to go before the big day, we'd just like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And like last season's result at Bournemouth, let's hope this one is something to marvel. Here come the team, the real Madrid strip, real Madrid strip for Burnley, all white. We are underway. Swung in by Fraser, good delivery in there. Header off towards goal and in. Bournemouth have scored. We've only played four minutes. It's in on goal. Might be Barnes. It's actually Barnes. Might have got the last touch there. Swing this in now. Deep towards the back post. Yes, beyond Megabell. Yes, Abelia. Chris Wood with it. Black scoring here. 
All square. Really good corner again from Ashley Westwood. Oh. Full for Westwood. Yes! Oh, Westwood yes! scored. Burley ahead. They turned it round. Two yes! goals in two minutes. Whoa! Into the middle, Wilson. Over oh, from five chance. yards. Big chance. Big chance. Coming in lower this time. They need to try and touch on. Cooper saved it as he's near post. <laughs> Here's Taylor. Oh. Got to run that. Is he no. kept it in play? Just about. Gets the cross in. Begovic to it. Go on. Here. Burnley with a chance here. Burnley! 3 1! Oh, it's daylight for the Clarence! Begovic, another error! Looks to get a cross into the middle. Oh. It's a lanky field away. Header away by Tarkovsky. Back ball for Fraser. Oh, well factored by Heat that is near post. Tarkovsky did well there on the line. He did, he did. And that is the final whistle. What a massive three points for Burnley. AFC Bournemouth one, Burnley three. All of the fans to their feet, applauding them. Performance of the season, I think, for Burnley. They've won here by three goals to one.